There's no questioning the pedigree of the Jeep Wrangler when it comes to off-roading. But for me, take the roof off and it also makes an excellent beach-going vehicle, combining a peaky V6 engine with that classic go-anywhere look. This Wrangler has been kitted out by Mopar with a host of accessories, including aftermarket off-road bars, a black grille across the front, lights connected to the high beam, tail light guards, leather interior, rhino rack roof racks, side steps, and a suspension upgrade. This raises the car, offering better on-road manners, more wheel travel, and therefore better off-road ability than the standard suspension. In addition to all that, this car has an electronic stabiliser bar disengage button. This offers more suspension and wheel travel, creating a vehicle ideal for rock hopping. There's also a diff lock button, which makes it a true four-wheel drive that can attack any track. headed north up the freeway to a small town called Swansea and on the road the Jeep Wrangler is comfortable but it's certainly not extraordinary. The steering isn't as precise as you would like it to be, the suspension feels stiff on the road and the vehicle has a small tendency to wander a little bit as you're driving and particularly as you're slowing at traffic lights. In the wet I have noticed that the vehicle has a tendency to step out a little bit, particularly mid-corner when you hit some bumps. I'll put that down to the firm suspension and I'm running high tyre pressures on the road here of around 40 psi. All that being said, it's perhaps not surprising given that this vehicle is designed around its off-roading ability more than its on-road ability. And it's a sacrifice most are willing to make. This is, after all, the ultimate lifestyle car. Whether you're on-road or off-road, the accelerator pedal is of particular concern for me. It sits much closer to the firewall than the brake, which means I've really got to lift my foot off and back to get it from the accelerator onto the brake. In addition to that, it's very close to the bottom of the dashboard, so if you had a larger foot, you could quite well get tangled up trying to move from one to the other, which could be a little bit dangerous. Elsewhere, the dashboard design hasn't changed a lot in a number of years. In comparison to the model that I owned in 1997, there is actually less storage space in the doors in this particular version. Swansea is a mere two hours north of Sydney, and you can camp and fish on the beach at Blacksmiths, which makes it the perfect first-timer destination. The first stop is a local fishing tackle store for the latest tips and information on what's biting. It's also a great place to pick up some fresh local bait and anything you may have forgotten. Beach driving permits are available from the home hardware store in Swansea. Alternatively, you can apply ahead of time online at the Belmont Wetlands website. There are a number of access points onto the beach, but before you head down there, be sure to stop and lower your tyre pressure before you hit the soft sand. Lowering your tyre pressure spreads the vehicle's weight over a larger tread area. This allows the car to float on the sand rather than sink into it. Beach is often the first place people go to test their four-wheel driving skills and it's probably the safest in that there's not a lot that you can hit on the beach. But there are a few techniques that are important to remember and the most important one really is to maintain momentum. The sand carries with it a lot of friction so it can slow your vehicle down very quickly indeed. Make sure you maintain your momentum and ensure that you keep your revs up. Not too high, but with just enough to keep the vehicle going forwards and with enough in reserve if you hit very soft sand and you need to power through. The other important thing to remember when you're traveling along the beach is follow the tracks that the vehicles before you have left. Here you'll find the most traction. The sand will be a little bit compressed and therefore there's less likely chance of getting bogged. 
coming to a stop, it's important that you don't slam your brakes on. If you do so, you're gonna dig yourself a hole and put a big pile of sand in front of each wheel, which will be very hard for the vehicle to climb out of. Gradually slow down, lift off the accelerator, and if possible, stop on a slope that's leading downhill and it'll help you get going much easier. The sand obviously has a lot of resistance and therefore your engine is gonna be working under more load and that means more petrol is gonna be used. Make sure you carry spare fuel and keep an eye on the fuel gauge. You'd be very surprised at how quickly that can go down. The beauty of driving along beaches like this is that you can find gutters as you're driving and stop for a fish. We've just spotted one here, out here on the right hand side of the car. So we're just gonna pull up, put a pilchard on that we got from the tackle store earlier and hopefully catch a salmon. So it's just about high tide and we've just thrown some lines out and I've managed to hook something here. We're kind of waiting for a long time. But now it feels quite heavy. It's run down the beach and now it's starting to push back up. But it's the beauty of coming to places like this where you can actually come here and find a nice quiet spot on the beach on your own. I've just caught a glimpse of him. It's a small tailor, I would say, or a salmon possibly. And the hard thing is, when you're fishing like this, you've got to be careful that you don't try and pull them out of the water too early. You try and use the waves to bring them in. And that is a beautiful Australian salmon. Quite prolific along the beaches on the east coast. A lot of fun to catch. Not particularly great to eat, but they are a very well-respected sports fish and a little bit tougher when you're catching them out of the suds off a beach like this. He's away. Little salmon. Bit of fun. The Jeep Wrangler is one of the last great off-riding icons and it's capable in any conditions. It's certainly not the most comfortable road-going vehicle, but that's really not the reason you buy one. It simply screams lifestyle. That unlimited ability to go anywhere and do anything, or at least simply just dream do.